Hey there, I'm Olivia Harper. Before I dive into my story, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, would ya? Trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around for this wild ride. I'm your typical 25-year-old graphic designer, busting my butt to make ends meet while living with my folks and little sis in our not-so-fancy suburban home. You'd think contributing a good chunk of change to the household would earn me some brownie points, right? Wrong. Olivia, when are you going to get a real job? My mom's favorite tune playing on repeat. I have a real job, mom. Graphic design is a legitimate career. If it was, you'd be able to afford your own place by now. Classic Caroline, always ready with a zinger. Dad would just shrug. And Megan? She'd smirk from behind her phone, probably updating her followers about her loser big sister. Despite the constant criticism, I tried to keep my chin up. My 26th birthday was coming up, and I was determined to make it special. I even splurged on a cute cake from that fancy bakery downtown. Hey guys, I was thinking we could have a small celebration for my birthday this weekend. What do you think? We'll see, Olivia. We might have plans, Mom replied, not even looking up from her magazine. I should have seen the warning signs, but hope can make you blind sometimes, you know? So, my birthday rolls around. I'm at work, feeling pretty good about myself. I even treated myself to a new outfit for the occasion. As I'm driving home, I'm imagining the surprised looks on their faces when they see the cake I bought. But let me tell you, I was the one in for a surprise. I pull up to our house, and at first I think I'm seeing things. There are boxes scattered all over the front lawn. My boxes. My stuff. What the hell? I jump out of the car, my heart pounding. That's when I see them. Mom, Dad, and Megan standing on the porch like some messed-up welcoming committee. What's going on? I ask, my voice shaking. Mom steps forward, her face cold as ice. Olivia, it's time for you to leave. You're no longer welcome in this home. I look at Dad, silently begging him to say something, anything. But he just stands there, avoiding my eyes. But it's my birthday. I don't understand. Where am I supposed to go? Megan pipes up. Maybe you should have thought about that before being such a burden all these years. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. A burden? I've been paying bills, buying groceries. And it's not enough, Mom cuts in. We need the space, and frankly, you need to grow up. I'm in shock, tears streaming down my face. Can I at least get my things? They're all packed, Dad finally speaks, gesturing to the boxes on the lawn. You should go now, Olivia. In a daze, I start loading boxes into my car, my whole life reduced to a few cardboard containers. As I'm about to leave, I turn back one last time. Why today? Why on my birthday? Mom's response chills me to the bone. Consider it our gift to you. Independence. And just like that, on what should have been a day of celebration, I found myself driving away from the only home I'd ever known with no idea where I was going. I ended up at some cheap motel, spending my birthday night alone, surrounded by my hastily packed belongings, wondering how my family could be so cruel. Little did I know this betrayal was just the beginning of a journey that would change my life forever. After that nightmare of a birthday, I threw myself into work like it was my lifeline. Pulling all-nighters, taking on every freelance gig I could find, anything to keep my mind off the betrayal and build up my savings. One late night at the office, my boss Elena caught me hunched over my desk, bleary-eyed. Olivia, honey, you're going to work yourself into the ground. What's going on? I spilled everything. The eviction, my family's cruelty, the cheap motel I was calling home. Elena's face softened with each word. Oh, sweetie, why didn't you say something sooner? Listen, I've got a spare room. It's yours until you get back on your feet. I nearly cried with relief. Elena, I can't thank you enough. Don't thank me yet. I'm going to work you harder than ever, she winked. And work me she did. But with a roof over my head and Elena's mentorship, I flourished. My design started turning heads and clients were clamoring for more. My best friend Zach was my rock through it all. One night over pizza and beer, he got that mischievous glint in his eye. Liv, you know what would really stick it to your family? 
becoming wildly successful? I laughed, but the idea took root. You're on to something, Zach. Watch me. Months flew by. I poured every ounce of creativity into my work, and it paid off. Elena called me into her office one day, grinning from ear to ear. Olivia, how does lead designer sound? Along with a hefty raise, of course. I was speechless. Elena continued. You've earned this, kid. Now go make me proud. With my new salary and the mountain of freelance work I'd been doing, my bank account was looking healthier than ever. But I wasn't done yet. I started a side hustle creating digital art. It was a slow burn at first, but then it exploded. My pieces were everywhere. Websites, apps, even billboards. Zach couldn't believe it. Liv? You're like a one-woman creative powerhouse. As my success grew, I started house hunting. That's when I stumbled upon my dream home, a stunning three-bedroom in the swankiest part of town. The realtor eyed me skeptically. It's a competitive market. Are you sure you can afford this? I whipped out my pre-approval letter with a smirk. I think I'll manage. The day I moved in was surreal. Zach helped me unpack, whistling as he took in the view. From motel to mansion in a year. You're living the American dream, Liv. But life has a way of throwing curveballs. I was lounging by my new pool when my phone buzzed. Megan's name flashed on the screen. I hesitated before answering. Olivia, it's me. I know who it is, Megan. What do you want? Her voice was small, nothing like the smug sister I remembered. I... I need help. Dad lost his job and Mom's spending is out of control. I can't afford college anymore. I felt a twinge of sympathy, quickly squashed by the memory of that fateful birthday. That sounds like a you problem, Megan. Please, Liv. We're family. I cut her off. Family? You lost the right to call us that when you threw me out on my birthday. I'm done being your safety net. But... No, Megan. I've learned the hard way that I need to set boundaries. This is me setting them. Don't call again. I hung up, my hand shaking slightly. Part of me wanted to help, but I knew better now. I'd risen from the ashes they'd left me in, and I wasn't about to let them drag me back down. I never thought my face on a magazine cover would lead to this mess. The day the article came out, my phone blew up with congratulations from friends and colleagues. Even Zach couldn't contain his excitement. Liv, you're officially a big deal now. We need to celebrate. But my moment in the spotlight was short-lived. A few days later, I was knee-deep in a new project when my doorbell rang. I checked my security camera and froze. There they were. Mom, Dad, and Megan, standing on my porch like they belonged there. I took a deep breath and opened the door. What are you doing here? Mom pushed past me, her eyes scanning my foyer with undisguised greed. My, my, Olivia, you've done well for yourself. Dad shuffled in behind her, looking uncomfortable. Megan trailed in last, her expression a mix of envy and resentment. You didn't answer my question, I said, crossing my arms. What do you want? Mom's saccharine smile made my skin crawl. We're here to discuss your living arrangements, dear. I raised an eyebrow. My what? Your new home, she gestured around. It's lovely. Perfect for a family, don't you think? A knot formed in my stomach. I'm not following. Dad cleared his throat. What your mother means is, well, we think it's time we all live together again. As a family. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You're joking, right? After what you did? Megan piped up. Come on, Liv. Water under the bridge. We're family. Family? I scoffed. You stopped being my family the day you threw me out. Mom's smile tightened. Now, Olivia, don't be dramatic. We made sacrifices for you. Your success is because of us. I felt my blood boiling. Sacrifices? You kicked me out on my birthday? We gave you the push you needed, Mom countered. And look how well you've done. It's time to repay that kindness. I laughed incredulously. Repay? By giving you my house? It's family property, Mom declared. We have a right to it. You have got to be kidding me. 
I muttered. Dad stepped forward, trying to play peacemaker. Olivia, be reasonable. We're struggling and you have all this space. So get a job, I snapped. I did. Mom's facade cracked. Now listen here, young lady. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. We're moving in or we'll take legal action. I couldn't help but smirk. On what grounds? We'll figure something out, she threatened. Don't test me, Olivia. I took a deep breath, centering myself. Let me get this straight. You show up at my house uninvited, demanding to move in because you think you're entitled to my success? After everything you've done? Megan rolled her eyes. God, Liv, stop being so selfish. That was the last straw. Selfish? You want to talk about selfish? How about kicking out your own daughter on her birthday? How about showing up years later demanding a handout? That's selfish. I walked to the door and opened it wide. Get out, now! Mom's face contorted with rage. You ungrateful little... Save it, I cut her off. I don't owe you anything, not a penny, not a square inch of this house, nothing. Dad tried one last time. Olivia, please. No, Dad. You had your chance to stand up for me years ago. You didn't. Now it's my turn to stand up for myself. They shuffled out, mom spitting threats about lawyers and family obligations. As I closed the door, I let out a shaky breath. Then I smiled, remembering the security system recording every word. I picked up my phone and dialed. Zach? Yeah, it's me. Remember when you said you wanted to put your law degree to good use? I've got just the case for you. After that confrontation, I knew I had to act fast. Zach was at my place within the hour, reviewing the security footage. This is gold, Liv. They don't have a leg to stand on. We need to be proactive, Zach advised. Your family might try to spread lies about you. That's when I remembered Elena's offer to help. I gave her a call, explaining the situation. Say no more, Olivia. I'll make some calls. Within a week, whispers about my family's behavior spread through the local business community. Dad's already slim job prospects evaporated overnight. Meanwhile, Zach and I dug deeper into my family's past. That's when we stumbled upon something interesting. Liv, look at this. Your parents' tax returns from the last five years, something's not adding up. I peered at the documents, my eyes widening. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Zach nodded grimly. Tax evasion. And not just a little. The next few months were a whirlwind. My family tried to contest the restraining order, but Zach shut them down spectacularly in court. Their reputation in tatters, they became social pariahs. Then came the IRS audit. I watched from afar as their lives unraveled, a mix of satisfaction and sadness washing over me. You okay? Zach asked one evening as we shared a bottle of wine on my patio. Yeah, I think I am. It's just, I never wanted it to come to this. He took my hand, his touch comforting. You didn't cause this, Liv. They did. I've learned that true family isn't about obligation or shared DNA. It's about choice, respect, and unconditional love. And I've found that, in spades, with the amazing people I now call my family. The story's over, but the conversation's just beginning. What would you have done in Olivia's shoes? Share your thoughts below. Like and subscribe for more.